So now that we've looked at the cross multiplication theorem, let's in proportions, let's let's look a little bit more closely on proportions and make a definition here. So let's just go ahead and let's say that I have the ratio one half and I'll make it into proportion. This is equal to, let's just say three sixths. And so I have a proportion there. So there's some terms that we have taught. I've talked about just a little bit, but I want to make sure that we define them a little bit more here. If I take the first number here and the last number, these are called my extremes. These two numbers are called the extremes. But then if I take the interior, this number, the two, and this number that sits here, the three, these are called my means. And when we take a look and think about it this way, the cross multiplication um, theory theorem says that when I multiply, when I multiply my means or my extremes, then that is equal to my, that's equal to my means. So here I have my extremes over here. You know, I multiply my extremes and it's equal to my mean. So there's some, allows us to do some things with that cross multiplication theorem there. And so there's some other theorems that we can get from that one. And when we derive some truths that are a little bit different out of a basic theorem, it is called the corollary. So a theorem that follows quickly, easily, and directly from another theorem is called the corollary. It's still a theorem, but it derived or taken out of one theorem. So we have three corollaries to the cross multiplication theorem. And so let's just take a look and see what it is that it's looking at. So if I take my means here, or I'm sorry, if I take my extremes here, and here are my means, I should, probably should have used the same color coding system there. I can rewrite this. And if you noticed, my, my, um, all I've done here is I have flipped my means. When I cross multiply, I still get A times D, which is my means, and B times C, which, I mean, A times D, which is my extremes. Remember, here are my extremes. These are my means. And so it still equals AD is equal to BC. So it's still the same as in the cross multiplication theorem, but I've just swapped out my means there. By the same token, I can do the same with my extremes to where I can swap places and I still get A times D is equal to B times C, or as I'm still multiplying my extremes and it's still equaling my means. <laughs> so those are just some things there um, that are the same. It doesn't seem really important right now, but when we get into similarity a little bit later on with with when we put it in the application, we actually use these a little bit more and it becomes a little bit easier. The last corollary here that we have is if you notice, all I do is I flip the fractions over. So instead of having A over B, I have B over A and the same on both. So all I've done is I have flipped my, ex my extremes, traded my extremes with my means. But when I do that, I still get B times C and A, which is equal to A times D. So whenever I cross multiply, when I look out here, I still get the same, you know, A, D is equal to B, C, no matter which way you look at it there. So then just some things to remember on means and extremes. So let's take a look at example number seven. It says, suppose we have the Proportion 2 over 5 is equal to 14 over 35. It says write down the other three true proportions that follow this one. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch my means. So I'm going to say 2 over 14 is equal to um, 5 over 35. And then the, on the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap flip my trade places with my extremes when i do that i will have 35 
over 5 is equal to 14 over 2. And then the last thing that I'm going to do for my last proportion that I have is I'm going to just flip the ratio. So I'm going to say 5 over 2 is equal to 35 over 14. Now, if you wanted to see that these were correct and, and still hold true, what you could do is you could just reduce both fractions. So 2 over 14 is the same thing as 1 over 7 because I can divide both by 2. And 5 and 35, I can divide both by 5, and that gives me 1 over 7. You see the proportion is still true. On the next one, I have 35 over 5. I can divide both by 5, so that's going to be 7 over 1 is equal to 14 divided by 2 is 7, so I have 7 over 1, so still proportion is true. And look at this one. I have 5 over 2 is equal to 35 over 14. Now, 5 over 2 is reduced. I can't reduce that anymore, but from 35 and 14, I can divide both by 7. So 35 divided by 7 is 5, and 14 divided by 7 is 2. So you can see there when you look at that, that all of those corollaries still give me true proportions.